10 steps to learn anything. Learning is a psychologically intensive process. It is not easy and effortless. If it feels that way, you're probably not learning. It takes dedication and hard work to learn how to educate yourself, but the rewards you gain over the course of your life by doing so are innumerable. The following 10 steps will help you learn anything faster and more efficiently. This 10 steps process isn't a magic formula that will make sure that you instantly get smarter but it can help you during the process of organizing your studies before you jump in and to absorb more of what you learn about using the natural curiosity mechanism that drives most of us. The important thing is to develop a system that you can use to teach yourself, a system that you can consistently apply to get results. Welcome viewers to another life-changing video previewed by Thinkrich Media. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so as not to miss out on any of our new videos. Step 1. Get the big picture. It's important to at least understand a little bit about a subject before diving into it. Then you can figure out exactly what you need to learn and decide the best way to do it. Learning is always tricky because when you first start to learn about something, you don't know enough about it to really understand what you need to learn. What you want to do in this step is to get the big picture of the topic that you're trying to learn about. Do some basic research on the topic that you want to learn. Instead of reading a single book on a subject, try to gather many different resources to help you learn. Resources can take many forms besides just books. In fact, today, with the wide availability of the internet and all different content available on it, you can find many resources for almost any topic you want to learn about. The important thing is that you find a variety of different resources. You don't want to be biased by the viewpoint of a single source and you want to have access to as much information as possible. Don't spend too much time on this step though. Remember, the goal isn't to actually learn the topic here, but it's just to get a big picture of what it's all about and how big it is. Number 2. Define success. When you know what your target is, you can more easily work backwards from the goal to determine the steps that you need to take to get there. You need to determine the scope of what you want to learn. You have to take information that you gained in the previous step and use it to narrow your focus to a smaller area something much more manageable. Use your reason for learning a topic to help you determine what the scope should be. You might be tempted to make your scope bigger and less focused because you want to learn about different subtopics in your topic area, but resist the temptation and try to be as focused as possible. You can only learn one thing at a time. You can always come back later and learn about the other subtopics that branch off of your original topic. But for now, pick one narrowly focused thing and go with it. The goal of this step is to come with a clear and concise statement that will define success for your learning endeavor. Use your time frame to help you determine the scope. If you have just one week, you need to be realistic about what you can learn in that time frame. Good success criteria will also keep you on track by giving your target to aim at. Just make sure that it's something that you can evaluate at the end of this process to be sure that you met the objective. Step 3. Talk to someone who's already learned it. Think of something challenging you learned how to do, possibly on your own, from the ground up. You probably made a lot of mistakes along the way, and in retrospect, you probably know some shortcuts and tips that could have saved you a lot of time. This is almost universally true. Even the most technical and complex subjects have shortcuts that can be taught by anyone familiar enough with the material. So it's advisable to seek out and talk to people who have already learned what you're learning. Ask them for advice and you'll probably get it. Step 4. Write everything down. For multiple reasons, we tend to remember things better once we've written them down. It could be because we focus to repeat what we're hearing and thinking in a written format, or it could be a psychological trick that teaches our mind that this particular information is worth remembering. Either way, it works. Whether you're taking notes or committing a lesson to memory, make a list of everything and anything you come across that might be helpful for learning your skill. Some of the things that you write down might include inspirational goals and milestones, different learning approaches, useful equipment and tools. Number 5. Make a commitment. The first commitment you make is to yourself. This is why writing down your goals is so important. The most powerful commitments you make are to others. Nothing is more motivating than making a public commitment to others. They will pick you up when you are down and hold you accountable if you fall or fail. Tell your partner, friends, family and colleagues, members of your learning group or club, commit to and work towards the goal with someone else. Number 6. Make a plan Set aside a few hours to hammer out a good plan that covers what, how and when. Each part of the plan will influence the others and even your original goals. Start with your goal and break it down into the components you will need to work out to get on them. 
Don't be afraid to go back, iterate and change things as you go through the process. Step number 7. Immerse yourself in the learning process. By now you should know that multitasking is bad. When your brain tries to do multiple things at once consciously, it usually ends up failing at everything. If you're going to learn something, you need to immerse yourself in the learning process. When learning something new, it's helpful to ignore the fluff and focus purely on the most important element of your subject. The key to this step is not to go too far. It's easy to get carried away and start consuming all the resources you have on the model you're trying to learn. But you'll find the most success if you can avoid that temptation. Instead, focus on learning the minimal amount you need to get started and to be able to experiment on your own in the next step. If you're taking lessons or are reading a book or are watching online videos or doing whatever else is necessary to consume these resources you've chosen, also look for the answers to the questions you came up with. Don't be afraid to go back and play some more as you discover answers to your questions and learn new things that you need to thoroughly understand your subject matter. Curiosity is a critical component of learning, especially self-learning. Isolate yourself and focus only on that task. You learn much faster and easier this way. Remember though, you still don't have to completely consume every single resource that you gathered. Step number 8. Find a way to self-correct. Learning is also an exciting roller coaster of starts, stops and setbacks that can at times make even the bravest passengers want to get off. That is why the most important quantities and qualities to cultivate when it comes to learning are patience and persistence. Our minds learn best when we are met with immediate feedback. If something's right, we need to feel rewarded. If something's wrong, we should be corrected immediately. This also prevents us from practicing or rehearsing the wrong things. Your system of feedback may depend on an outside party or semi-constant check-ins with a source, like a book, to ensure that you're getting things right. Approach every skill learning adventure as a game, challenge and experiment, adopt a growth mindset and your mind will grow. Number 9. Practice consistently. There's a common belief that it takes about 10,000 hours of practice for anyone to get good at anything, perpetrated by the book Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Empirical evidence suggests that this isn't quite true, but there's certainly a wealth of evidence that practice and repetition are your best tools for learning. Make your studying habits continually rewarding, set up milestones along the way, and experiment with new learning tactics to keep you from getting bored. This is the way our brains are wired. The more we do something, the more important it becomes, and the more entrenched it becomes in our memory. Step number 10. Explain what you've learned to someone else. If you want to test your knowledge on a subject, try explaining it to someone else. This forces you to reward your innate knowledge and revisit it from the ground up. It's a perfect test to see if you've truly internalized something or if you've just been going through the motions of learning and it's a great way to fill in the gaps in your own learning as you try to explain it to others. It's a process that will cause you to really dissect and understand the topic you're learning in your own mind as you organize information in a way that will make it understandable to others. When you go through this process, you find that there are many things that you thought you understood that you didn't. You also begin to make connections that you didn't see before and simplify the information in your head as you try to condense it down and regurgitate it. It may be tempting, but whatever you do, don't skip this step. This step is crucial to retaining information and developing more than a surface level understanding of a subject. Thanks for watching. Feel free to comment if we left out something on this list. Support us by helping our channel grow by liking, subscribing, and turning on your notification.